ChatGPT has got so many of us academics addicted to the platform, but the one thing to note is that the citations are fake and it's not very reliable to be used in academic research. However, if you're someone who is a little bit too addicted and can't leave the platform, there are actually some ways that you can use ChatGPT in an ethical way, but also in a reliable way that doesn't compromise your research <laughs> or your results. And in today's video, I have 10 different uh, reasons why and how you can use ChatGPT to help you with your research processes and to help you with writing and understanding your research better. So if you'd like to see more of this kind of stuff on my channel, then don't forget to press the subscribe button and don't forget to like my video. And also let me know, do you use ChatGPT that much in your research and are you allowed to? And also, is it something that you find helpful and how? Okay, so the first way is for brainstorming. So I like to use ChatGPT to brainstorm when I'm just thinking about ideas and then I'll use these initial ideas to take them off ChatGPT and take them to other AI platforms that are more research-based or even to PubMed. So let's say I were to ask a question and use a prompt, something like find a research topic for a PhD in the area of blank. And that is my prompt. And then I you know, pull up a few questions, it'll pull up a few topics for me and I'm able to take those topics and take them to a platform where I can think about it in a more critical and analytical way, find actual research papers to back up my understanding and then go from there. You might find that it isn't very helpful at all and it doesn't give you um, very accurate information but it does give you a starting point and it can be very useful for brainstorming for topics that uh, maybe are not so biosciences. The next way is to refine my titles and my subheadings. I really like to use this. I really love to use it actually for this um, reason. You have a title, you've put this title together, but you don't quite love it. You don't think it's that great. And you want to just kind of refine it to make it sound a lot more appealing or to make it shorter or longer. Then you can stick it into ChatGPT and ask ChatGPT to refine this title to make it more appealing or to um, aim it to a scientific audience or for a journal or for a conference. So just be really specific with the prompts that you give ChatGPT and then you'll find that it gives you a couple of options. If you don't like those options, you can say, give me five more, give me 10 more, make them longer, make them shorter um, and keep on inputting. So it honestly really helps. And I find that it just gives me a nice kind of a range of options that I can choose from. The next thing is to provide me with some keywords. So let's say you have a, you know, you had a massive paragraph and you just want to pull out five keywords for that paragraph. Um, maybe your abstract, for example, you want to pull out five abs uh, keywords for that abstract to include at the bottom um, of your abstract and just say keywords and those five. You can just use ChatGPT for that and just say, pull out what are the five keywords um, for this particular abstract and it will give you those five keywords and that is most likely what you will go with. And this is great because it isn't like, you know, you're not writing anything, you're not including any original information here. It's just putting out some keywords for you um, that you can use to help you with your writing. The next thing I like to use it for, well, I haven't used it like this myself, but I have suggested it quite a few times, is to use as an essay outline. So you have an essay title and you don't even know where to begin. You've got, done all this reading and you have an idea of sort of what you want to include, but you just need an outline. You can use ChatGPT to give you an essay outline. Um, and from there you can begin the actual process of writing. A lot of us really struggle when we have complete blank slates. When I have a blank piece of paper in front of me, I struggle for kind of how to begin it. Even if I know the information, it's sometimes so hard to just get something down on paper to begin with, after which you can kind of, you know, commence. So this is really nice. It just gives you a nice outline for how to begin um, and, break, and it just breaks it down for you into all the different sort of sections you might want to speak about. Some of those you'll keep, some of those you might amend, but it's somewhere to begin. The next way I like to use ChatGPT is for referencing. Now, I mentioned to you in the beginning, the references they provide are obviously incorrect and they are fake. So don't use the references that they provide you. But let's say you have a reference and you want to change it and write it in a specific format, I would definitely use ChatGPT for that. So I don't know, let's say you had a reference and it's in Harvard, you want to change it to APA, you can say change this heart or write this reference um, in APA format. Or let's say you have a website link and you want to write it as 
in Harvard because I find that students really struggle with writing websites as in actual references um, then you can do that as well so it's just a nice way of converting references and writing it in the correct format that's how I use it but give it your references don't ask it for new references the next thing I like to use it for is for my methods now you're probably wondering methods yes to understand my methods more so if you use a particular technique and you don't really understand it and you want to justify why you'd use that technique you can just ask ChatGPT um, can you give me a reason why I'd use western blotting to discover a protein knockdown and it'll give you a good reason and that you can use it to help you understand why you're using a specific approach and then you can use that to help you write that section of your methods you can even say something like analyze the strengths or weaknesses of a specific method that you were thinking of using again you're not writing that text in your actual thesis but you're using it to help you understand it and then you can use parts of that for when you're justifying why you've used your particular method another way that i like to use it for methods is for example if i'm using quantitative or qualitative analysis and i'm not quite sure which one falls into which or if it's a mixed method you can just ask chat gpt i'm planning on doing x analysis um is it quantitative is it qualitative give other alternative methods or approaches and it can do that for you the next way i like to use it is for writing some results so in your results, you might want to use third person for your thesis. Um, so you can ask it to convert what you've written into third person or make it sound passive. Um, and again, you're not writing anything original. You're just converting it. It's just writing it in another way for you. But do make sure you go back and check and read it to ensure that it is actually it actually makes sense. <laughs> um, always do that, of course. So this is a nice way of converting what you already have and transforming it into a slightly different format. The next way is to improve language. Um, again, I really like this. I think it works well if you're someone that hasn't got English as a first language or if you're someone who isn't used to academic writing because academic writing is quite particular in the way that it arranges information. So you could take a bit of text, not all of it, but a paragraph or a few sentences and say, write this in a more academically appropriate format or um, write this in a passive voice or uh, improve or cut down the number of words in this paragraph so you are the one who has written it you are the author of this work it has just been edited um, by ChatGPT. and funnily enough there's actually a journal i think it was i can't remember what journal it was i'm gonna put a screenshot here that said that um they are going to accept papers that were written uh, or have used chat GPT or AI to help enhance the academic writing but you cannot list the AI platform as an author but you can use it to help you enhance and help like make small edits and changes to the to the work already so that just goes to show that I think it's becoming more pertinent that AI is not going anywhere and it's definitely here to stay so it's important for us to learn how to use it ethically and to use it and for best you know best practices I guess. The next way I like to use it is to give me quick summaries um, if you're writing an abstract you need to understand what you've like what you've done and what your research is in a quick um, in a quick way that summarizes everything so again if you have a paragraph of text and you don't quite understand it or you're copying and pasting it from a different book or another research paper you can just put it into ChatGPT and say can you summarize this for me you're not copying and pasting that summarized text you're just using it to understand and to get a like a simpler version of what's in front of you and i think that's completely okay and last but definitely not least um if you are a follower of mine and you've been here for a little while you know how much i absolutely love productivity and time management and you know scheduling etc and habit building and formation um so chat can really help you with forming a schedule for your time so you can say um something like i'm writing a 10,000 word thesis i need to complete it in three months give me a table or you know create a table of how much i have to write every single day between now and January the 1st in order to complete my thesis and it will tabulate it for you and it'll give you a full schedule <laughs> um, so that's really helpful if you're someone who wants to just quickly break down and um, get a clear idea of like a schedule and a timeline so yeah I hope this is helpful I mean I hope I introduce you to new ways of using chat GPT that go beyond write this essay for me you know that's obviously not ethical it's obviously not 
something I'd recommend, but there are ways that you can use it. It's not going anywhere, it's here to stay. So it's important we learn how to use it correctly. Let me know if you've used it before and how you find it and what you use it for. Um, and if you've never used it before, let me know what you might think you could use it for. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel to see more from me and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.